weapon that they use, like a whip. And it's totally different from the idea that we have about education, providing everybody the same possibility, the same opportunities, even the same curriculum. We started to discuss about the possibility of, of a single and unique and equal education for all. And it took five years to discuss that. But finally it came into force in 1973 that there should be a kind of a basic education that is similar for everyone regardless of, of social or economic background. The system in Finland relies on the principle of equality and equity. As a parent, you are sure, wherever you live in this country, that your child is getting same type of education with same type of curriculum. So it's equal and uh, it's free. They get uh, all the materials free of charge. They get their food, lunches, even snacks like in our school, free of charge. It's very democratic in that, in that way. Can you tell me about the balance between what, what is done nationally versus what is done locally? Yeah. Nowadays, uh, Finnish state uh, and actually Finnish National Board of Education sets core curriculum for basic education. It uh, uh, gives much leeway to, to uh, schools and, and municipalities to operate. It's also blessedly brief, isn't it? I mean, your it, curriculum frameworks are about this thick, aren't they? Which is really extraordinary when I think about our textbooks. It's, it's, that, that's true. In our society, we have a, a core curriculum and then schools make their own curriculums and they have lots of uh, liberty in making the, their own decisions. Second phase was actually that, that during 1980s we moved uh, teacher education and training uh, to universities so that all teachers are required nowadays master's degree in universities. We do not have any kind of an inspectorate. You know, there are no uh, inspecting schools or teachers. We kind of uh, trust to our system. You know, we have a whole system where principals are supposed to come in and formally evaluate the teacher. But you don't do that here, do you? In Finland, the school's education system is uh, based on trust. That the teachers are trusted to do their uh, work properly. If people are trusted, then they want to be worth that trust. They, they are more bound to be trustworthy. I think people perform better when they are trusted. They do a better job when they are not controlled, because nobody wants to be told what to do. So There is a huge trust to all levels in this educational system we have. Ministry trusts on the schools and, and this system and parents trust on our educational system that allows you to act freely, concentrate on your individual way of learning how to learn. Actually it took 25 years to learn how to trust and in 1991-1993 when we localized the curricular process I told you previously, we learn to trust each other. I think if people are always checking up on you, then you are just trying to show them that or, or try to look that you are doing your job well. But if, if somebody really trusts you, then you, I think it's a, a basic human quality uh, want, wanting to be worth that trust. A compliance-based system, you know, is something we see around us all the time, where students are saying, what, what's, what do I have to do to get a C or a B? What's the minimum? Teachers sometimes complying with the district mandates, districts complying with the testing requirements, everybody trying to figure out what's the minimum they have to do to just get by. So far, the, the trust has been very important. And I would like to say that, that why we can have trust is that we have trained and, and educated teachers so well. We can trust them. They are professionals in their field. And otherwise, we couldn't work, actually. If we set too strict guidelines for teachers, and they are highly trained, 
why to bother? It's, it's up to teachers to do their job. But uh, trust is, is uh, incorporated in, in many ways in Finnish society. You know, I've seen some wonderful schools in this country. Almost all of them were small. Almost all of them were startups in the sense that they were new, uh, small schools within schools, schools of choice or charter schools. And almost all of them were based on trust. So there's no question in my mind that a trust-based system, trust with professionalism, can get absolutely better results. The question is, can we do trust at scale? I think it's a necessary experiment. We have to find out because the compliance system at scale is simply a spiral downhill. I went to Finland as a guest of the National Board of Education who, who was sponsoring along with the Finnish Ministry of Education a conference called Education 2020 and they had invited some of the leading policymakers, educators and so on to come and really talk about how the comprehensive education goals may need to be shifted or changed in the coming years for all students in Finland. So the question we might ask ourselves is how do we talk about education in a way that's not punitive and in a way that's future oriented and in a way that grounds the conversation in the experiences and in the needs of young people themselves as well as in our economy and in our democracy. So tell me about this 2020 conference. You're here today to talk about education in 2020. You're already the best in the world. What are you worrying about? Why are you thinking about 2020? Although. Uh, PISA tables say that, that we are uh, topping many of the, the PISA, PISA studies. Our national evaluations show that, that we have areas where we need to go further. For example, writing skills, communication skills. But to, to be more, more f profound, it is about education itself. What are the, the outcomes of education? And there we have to bear in mind that, that we have been too strictly academic so far. So it's, it's not enough to memorize things. We should actually learn how we use the knowledge. It's not distinction between 21st century skills or academic skills. We need both. And, and we don't want to abandon the good situation we have in, in academic skill area. No, no, that's definitely true. It's much more important to learn to think than to learn to repeat some basic uh, uh, subject matter things. Family values are important, education is important, reading is important. It's important to understand reasons behind things. Concentrate, read, dream, talk, understand, reason find uh, solutions yourself. Finnish education is still too subject-oriented. We should actually highlight thinking skills, collaborational skills, that kind of skills which are more higher order. As we think about what has to happen in this country, it's not just changing what's taught and how things are taught, but really reshaping the teaching profession. And it's not about money. It's about teachers thinking of themselves as knowledge workers, teachers understanding that they have to be innovators in the classroom every single day as they think about bringing all students to high levels of attainment.
What most impressed me about my experience in Finland is the way an entire country has focused relentlessly on preparing all students for work and citizenship in the 21st century. But the real question is, what can we here in America learn from their experience? Clearly they're a very different country, different culture, our country is far more heterogeneous and larger, and obviously what works in one country may or may not work in another. Nevertheless, I think it would be a serious mistake to just dismiss Finland. In fact, I believe we need to see Finland as a laboratory for 21st century educational innovation, a place that has done sustained research and development to create a truly world-class education system for a new century. Oh, well done! Good job! One of the most important lessons from Finland is that the business of school is learning, period. It's not sports, nor is it even extracurriculars. Nothing interrupts the learning process in classrooms. It is sacrosanct. A second valuable lesson is the way in which they have totally transformed the education profession over the last quarter century. Very high standards for admission into schools of education, so only the very top students become teachers. All teachers must earn a master's degree, which brings far more academic rigor into the classroom. And the kind of training these student teachers receive, where they observe master teachers and have their own teaching practices critically evaluated, really prepares them to enter into the classroom ready to engage all students. Yet a third lesson from Finland is the idea of less being more. Very few national curriculum guidelines which can be adapted locally, Class time is longer and there are fewer classes in the day, which allows students far more time to do projects and to go into greater depth in their academic studies. Then there are the ways in which Finland has focused on how best to motivate students. The students have many more choices for the projects they pursue in their classes, and the arts are far more well integrated into every class. But perhaps most important, by developing a very comprehensive vocational education system, at the high school level, which prepares students for jobs immediately out of high school. I have to wonder that if we gave every student the choice of a high caliber vocational education system in every high school in America, might we not be able to significantly reduce our epidemic dropout rate? But what I found most surprising of all is the way in which the Finnish education system is built up on trust. The ministry trusts the municipalities to adapt and adopt the national curriculum as needed. The municipalities trust the teachers and the schools to do what's right. The teachers even trust the students to use their time wisely and to use the internet and other technologies responsibly. Of course, trust doesn't happen overnight. The Finns began with developing a real consensus about the importance of education and the purpose of education. This consensus has enabled Finns to work far more collaboratively and cooperatively to prepare all of their children for a rich and satisfying and productive life in the new global knowledge economy. So is there anything Finland might learn from some of America's best education practices? Actually, I think there is. In the best schools that I've seen in this country, students have digital portfolios and publish their work. Teachers videotape their own and one another's lessons leading to a kind of transparency for all students and teachers in learning and teaching. So of course we have some wonderful teachers in extraordinary schools here in America. But what was so inspiring about Finland is the way in which they are doing this kind of high level of education for every single student in the country. For me, this is the Finland phenomenon.